Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to today's web exchange. We've got a uh, lot of people signed on right now, so I'm probably going to turn off my camera shortly to save bandwidth. If you're on the phone, which I imagine you are in order to be able to talk or hear, then please do mute yourself if you're not presenting. In order to mute, you just, uh, you can see on the screen if you're on WebEx, it's star six to mute and star seven to unmute. Uh, Calgary, Calgary wanted to talk a little bit about uh, staff engagement, using existing resources and planning uh, future virtual programs and services. So I'll pass it over to, I believe, Warren, are you the first up? I am indeed, yeah. Perfect. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Warren Hartwell. Um, I'm the new ED for Calgary MFRC. Um, I started about four weeks ago, um, so I didn't envisage then closing my MFRC um, three weeks into the job. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, that's what we've had to do. And I, and I guess for most of you, um, we're, we're all endure, enduring the new norms of working from home um, and, you know, dealing with the um, sort of um, um, distancing um, policies that, that, that are out there at the moment and, you know, trying to keep that uh, physical distancing um, um, going as much as possible. And that does prove um, um, incredibly difficult um, when we want to consider our sort of daily, daily work regime. Um, so um, I just really want to speak to, I think, one of the big successes um, that we've sort of discovered um, is, is we set up a, a tri-weekly virtual meeting. And um, we did this for a number of reasons, namely for a, for a, a check-in, um, for a bit of a health check, um, a bit, bit of a, a cognitive check as well, you know, a little bit of social interaction um, over the web. Um, but also just to just to make sure everybody uh, is doing okay, um, and that we're still talking, um, and we can actually see see a face um, that that we're talking to as well. But also, it was to actually get some work done, um, and that was to um, you know share what was going on on our on our um, work pads um, and try and continue with the work themes that we're engaged in as much as possible. But also do a lot of brainstorming around perhaps new ideas that we weren't thinking of on how we're going to stay connected with our community. Because one of the things that we all agreed to was um, we are a resource center, as, as all MFRC, uh, MFRCs are. And you know we wanted to prove to our community that whilst we may not be in office, we are still here for you. We're still listening to you. We're still trying to provide you with some ideas to stay connected. And, and, and offer the services just perhaps in a different way. Um, so um, we've been using the tool Zoom, which I guess most of you are probably familiar with. We, we found it um, absolutely perfect for what we're doing. And we did have some trepidation around um, connecting in three times a week, which is a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that we thought that might be too much. What we've discovered is absolutely perfect. Um, we've always had plenty to talk about. Uh, the health check piece for all of us is very important. Uh, and we've been able to keep on top of pretty much everything that's going on at the time. Um, and we, can, we aim to continue that sort of tri-weekly check-in going forward for how long you know, we need to do that. Um, so I think um, from a virtual perspective, that's been a real big win for us uh, as an MFRC. I'm going to now hand over to Tammy Hutchinson, um, one of my two communications team, um, and Tammy's going to talk about some of the resources that we've been using and we've discovered and, and some of the successes we've had around some of these virtual resources. So thanks, Warren, for handing that over. We were able to add a resource center to the CAF Connection site for Calgary um, with resources in education, entertainment, mental health, and parenting within the first week of our office closure. And we really were able to get these virtual resources out to our community so quickly because we focused on finding 
virtual resources that already existed that were from reputable uh, sources. So our first uh, point of research was we started with our public library system um, and we're actually quite surprised with the Trevor, treasure trove of virtual programs and resources um, that were already available to anyone in our community. Um, so we just kind of shone a spotlight onto those, those resources. Then we tapped into our local school boards um, and to teachers that our staff members knew uh, to find out what resources they were recommending to parents and to students. Um, and we really got a lot of really great information from, from those areas. Um, after that, we then went to areas like Alberta Health Services and the World Health Organization and gleaned through all of their resources to see what they were recommending, not just for health, but for mental health as well. We found a lot of really great resources on their sites um, that we could share with our communities. And then we also looked into various news articles and things like that to see what reporters were recommending for resources. So those were really our first stops, was just going to places that had already done the research essentially for us, and then deciding what was best for our community and putting those all together into, into one spot on our in the community section on, on CAF Connection. We've found so far that the most popular resources that people are using, we thought it was going to be the education and parenting resources but it's actually been our adult and entertainment resources that have been the most popular for our community. Uh, for example, the, we set out a link about how to take a free Ivy League college course, and we've had a lot of people really interested in that. And we also had quite a few virtual tours available to various museums around the world, and those have been really popular with, with people in our community as well. Um, so really our focus was just getting, getting out quickly with stuff that was already existing and not recreating the wheel for that, that first week or so. And now we're getting into the point where we are planning our future virtual programs and services. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tammy Plunkett, who is the other Tammy on our communications team, to talk about that section. If she's there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so here I am planning our future virtual programs. What we uh, really are focusing on is making sure that we are addressing what our community wants and needs and not necessarily what we think is a good idea uh, because we were actually surprised by how many people were more interested in our Ivy League college course uh, resource. So we have done. Um, some polls on Facebook. We've done some uh, just general posts asking people to show us what they've been working on in terms of home projects and crafts, just to get people engaged. And in our weekly newsletter, we created a poll asking people uh, what types of um, online courses or social gatherings that they would like. And um, we got a, a huge response uh, on that already. So now we get to plan some Zoom um, online cooking classes uh, is what was clicked on the most in our community. Uh, and then also looking for stress and anxiety busters for the two, top two. So uh, that's going to be what we plan to work on in the future to offer uh, in terms of programs and services while we stay home. <laughs> and that's it. I, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, this is Leanna Clifford from Greenwood MFRC. Uh, thank yep. you guys very much for putting this on today. And I'm just wondering if you guys, so you said you're pulling content and resources that are already reputable and available. Um, are you creating any new content? Like, are you guys the ones that are videoing, like, home cooking and that kind of thing? Thanks.
That, that is our plan moving forward, is to host online uh, virtual cooking classes and uh, uh, have a, a reputable VAC-approved uh, therapist do a, a stress-busting and anxiety-busting workshop, that type of thing. Thank you. Yeah. We're also looking into um, still using existing resources but having things like an online movie night with Netflix parties and things like that. So using existing structures um, to, to still reach our community in a, in a different way. Um, and we've been looking at moving our volunteer appreciation event to some kind of online event and doing online counseling sessions and things like that. So um, that's definitely the part that we're in right now. Uh, but the existing resources just helped us get off the ground quickly. All right, so um, I know that uh, Peggy as well, her, her staff have been working on a few things within the, uh, within the realm of what, uh, what, is, what is possible. Peggy, did you want to speak to uh, some yeah, of the things sure. that you've been working on? Uh, yeah, thanks, Jonathan, and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I just wanted to say that when this situation started, um, I guess the main message that I gave my staff is that uh, our job hadn't changed. We support the military community, but the way we do it is definitely going to have changed, so get creative. Um, all of our staff is working from home, and we don't have any staff at all dedicated to uh, communication, so what you're seeing <laughs> is a very amateur uh, team event. Uh, effort. Um, so initially we just focused on making our community uh, know how we were operating, what our capabilities were, and most importantly how to reach us. And we felt that it was important to be a conduit for passing on information um, on how to deal with the COVID-19 both physically and mentally and, and uh, like Calgary mentioned, it had to, had to be from uh, reputable sources. We also felt it was important to stay engaged and connected and not just be an information passing tool. So um, almost immediately we started just a snow sculpture competition. Uh, I guess in true MFRC fashion, we used what we had and we got plenty of snow here. So we started with that one and we've seen that our community um, really got engaged. So we moved on to Lego and now we're going to use Zoom and we're going to do Easter Bonnet fashion show and just some fun things to lighten the mood and, and but still uh, the underlying thing is to remain engaged with our community. Um, so now that we've seen that this situation won't be ending anytime soon, We've come to terms with continuing um, to be challenged and connected with, and I keep saying to my staff, we have to remain relevant to our community. That's, that's no small feat, and social media has to be utilized as we've never utilized it before, um, and we've got to rise to the challenge. So all my staff has been working, I guess, on this every day um, and staying connected. Uh, like Calgary mentioned, is really important. We're, we're talking to each other pretty much all day through Messenger and recently through Zoom. Um, so we, we've agreed to post a couple of times a day to not overload the page. And we also agreed that our staff will stick in their own uh, lane, stick to their own mandate. But they're sending stuff to each other all the time. You know, wouldn't this be good? Um, my other advice would probably be to dig deep um, be out there constantly, and I sort of use the term mining information. You've got to be mining all the time. But when you're mining, you've got to make sure that the information is real. Track it down, call the numbers, go to the websites. Because um, if we're attaching our name to it, we've got to make sure that it's, uh, that it's real. And I guess my other thing that we've been doing is sort of go walk. So can, uh, can people hear now if you can give me a check mark? Do yeah, you see what the Okay, perfect. Excellent. So seems like uh there was a bit of a bit of an issue there. I think we lost Peggy uh in terms of the teleconference, but Peggy, if you're on the line, then uh feel free to dial in or if you're already on uh if you can hear my voice, then uh press star seven to see if you can unmute your mic. Okay, so just uh, moving forward from here, I wrote in the chat, just in case the, uh, the teleconference line had gone down altogether, 
Hello. Do, uh, does, does anyone have any uh, any suggestions that they're working on in their uh, in their local community, and in addition to what you've already heard? So feel free to write in the chat. So thus far, we've heard a lot about uh, social media, uh, possibly mining information to make sure that you've had uh, the correct information from your community. We've talked about messaging to staff in terms of, uh, yes, the job has changed in terms of where you're doing it, but working a little bit differently and sharing stuff more online. Any other things that you guys are finding are working particularly well in your locations, whether or not it might be social media channels, uh, particular activities, those kinds of things that families seem to be responding to. Okay, so we've got a question here that are there any centers using YouTube? So perhaps if you could, um, if for those centers using YouTube, if you could put an X, so use the bullhorn to put an X next to your name, and we'll see how many of you are using YouTube right now to share with families. Doesn't look like very many right now. Okay, yeah, so Calgary looks like they're, they're using YouTube to a certain extent. And Aaron as well in Comox says that we're also planning on uh, planning a check check-in style session once a week as we're smaller in Calgary and uh, and are in the process of developing new content. Our youth staff are still doing activities during the drop-in center hours to keep the youth occupied, which is excellent, fantastic. They have a great youth center in Comox. Uh, Nancy mentioned online coffee chats. Uh, Elsa said, what virtual platforms are people using other than Zoom for hosting virtual events? It sounded like uh, some people were using Facebook, possibly, uh, for joint watching events, but I'd be interested to hear from the rest of you in terms of what you're using. Susan Stoddart mentioned we're starting a virtual play group with our parents through an early on program. And uh, Martha, you mentioned that videos are being posted on Facebook of stories uh, being read in songs, which is pretty cool. It's interesting that Facebook seems to be not popular with the younger crowd, but quite popular with many military families still. Uh, Fran uh, Francine Abel said that we're doing online children animation and family entertainment. That's cool. Excellent, and feel free, by the way, to send any screenshots to me and I can post them to the website and send them around to the rest of the group. Uh, Francine also mentioned that you're doing live Facebook, which is excellent. That's really popular right now. Erin, you mentioned in Comox that you're using Zoom, Facebook, and Instagram. So that's great. Kim, uh, we're in the process, just made a video today of a weekly parent and talk video to place on our Facebook page. So lots of really cool ideas. So feel free, part of, the, part of the idea behind these sessions is to find out what other people are doing so that you know who to contact if you want to find out more about it. So I'll be sending around this video after the fact because I've been uh, recording it, just FYI, so that those who can't attend today will be able to view it after the fact. Diane also mentioned that um, they're hosting an online bingo game using Zoom and they receive great registration. The game is Friday afternoon and they'll see how it all works out. Our families are looking forward to it. And Hélène mentioned that uh, starting next week with an online get-together in French in Trenton, still continue the knit and chat and book club through Zoom meetings. And I know lots of people are using Zoom. Okay. And Aaron, you mentioned that we do a recipe roundup event or a series, or we might do a recipe roundup event or a series of events where a common recipe is the theme. Chicken soup, bread, etc. Very cool. Everyone gets together and swaps tips on how they cook a family favorite. And then Martha, you sent a link, 
which is fantastic. So thank you for sharing that. I'll as well I'll, I'll put that uh, I'll share that around with the rest of the group afterwards. And Constantine, you mentioned second language practice online. Yeah, this is great a great opportunity for um, for some families who can manage it to be able to practice their second language if they're stuck at home. Okay, so it looks like we're about out of time for today, but uh, do keep in mind that if you guys want to, in a, in a few weeks, we can check in again. So maybe if, um, if you're interested in checking in again about what the MFRCs are doing in terms of virtual options, we can do the same thing again and uh, hopefully not have the difficulties with the teleconference line. And if you're interested in that, please uh, just give a check and just to get a sense of whether or not that would be of interest in a few weeks. Okay, so it looks like several of you are interested in checking in again in a few weeks. So keep an eye out for the Save the Date uh, email that I'll send around and I'll try to disseminate it in as many different ways as possible to reach as many people as possible. So thanks so much for Calgary and Gander for sharing your ideas today as well as the rest of you sharing your ideas in chat. Clearly there's lots of good stuff going on out there. And uh, we'll keep in contact. Have a great rest of the day.